Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 85. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now, uh, not for the Asian Open. Uh, we're here for the MX-5 Miata Trophy today. Um, this is part of the professional category. We got very slow cars. Uh, so we got the MX-5 Gen 1. It's F158 class. Um, which I believe is slightly more powerful than the Yaris that we were just driving. It's 158, this is 150. Ugh. Great. Uh, starting off with Twin Ring Mategi, moving on to Sebring, New York Circuit, Maple Valley Raceway, Road Atlanta, and finishing off with Sunset Peninsula. Let's get going. All right, so I've physically ran out of wires uh, in my setup. So I'm currently running my controller in Bluetooth mode rather than wired mode, which I mean probably won't have too much of a problem. Bluetooth is still faster than whatever shit the original uh, Xbox controller, Xbox 360 controller had. That latency was fucking diabolical. Kodo, Sinsu, what is up? How are you today? Welcome. I hate this car with a passion. Oh yeah, so, um, chat. Chat, 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 chat. I had... I had something very different today. I had my first ever bubble tea. <laughs> I had bubble tea for the first time. And honestly, it is amazing. It's one of the fucking crazily good. He's a zoomer now. <laughs> nah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. It's weird though. It's like a it, it's a weird drink. I'll be honest. Like the bubbles, you sort of like bite into them, and then it's like. But it's cool, and it tastes really good, so. Thought you was going to say Alfa Romeo. Mate, I'm still so pissed off about that. So, I, um, I've obviously been looking for a car. And I saw an Alfa Romeo Me Too for sale for 995 pound Um... It was classed as an insurance write-off. It was the only problem, which meant it'd probably be expensive. Um, but yeah, it was a cool looking car. It looked in pretty okay condition. Obviously, as a first car, every car's pretty shit. But f as first cars go, it was in good condition. Um, and yeah, I was so wanting to get it. And what was even worse, right, the insurance for it was apparently 1600 for a year. Like, for the first 12 months. Oh, for fuck's sake. These fucking AI cars are like tanks. But then it doesn't have, the Miata just doesn't have any power to overtake. Yeah, I passed my driver's test a while ago. I announced it on my, um... Oh, actually, I didn't announce it on stream, did I? Because I didn't do that stream on Friday. So, technically, I haven't announced it on stream, but I've announced it on Discord. But, yeah. I did pass my driving test. It was quite a, quite a funny experience, actually. I don't think I've told this, so... I got six minors on my driver's test. So, when it came... Obviously, that's still a pass in the UK. You're allowed up to, I think it's 12 or 15 minors before you fail. 
Um, but if you get three of the same minor, it's also a fail. Um, basically, we're driving for about 10 minutes. Um, and then it came to a part that I had never driven on before. It came to a road I'd never driven on. Now, there were a lot of cars parked at the side of the road. Um, and I sort of pulled out. Uh, like you're supposed to when you're trying to pass them to sort of, you know, get your position and continue down the road. So you have to pull into the opposite lane. Pulled into the opposite lane and a car started coming. So I had to pull back into a gap because I'm in the wrong lane. I can't carry on. 43 plus out of 50. Uh, isn't that... Um Theories, though, not practical. Because in the UK, our theory is 43 out of 50 as well. Yeah, so this is my actual uh, practical test. Oh, this white car is really annoying me. <laughs> M1 first, let's go. Oh my god, just lost my positions. Um, yeah, so... That happened. When I pulled in, I was about to pull out and I stalled the car. Which is crap. Because um, I had actually shifted into third by accident instead of first. Um, I obviously attempted again to pull away, but I was still in third. And I was really flustered. Really fucked that up. He marked that as two minors for um, clutch control. Um, or gear choice, something like that. It was it was one or the other, but he marked them down as two minors. Should have been a major fail, but it wasn't. Uh, that should have been a fail, fuck me. Yeah, I mean, the Brera, I haven't seen a Brera going for sale, so I wouldn't know Sinsu, but... It would be pretty cool to get a Brera. Um, I'll call Leo. I'll have a look in a minute, Hans. Yeah, so that was two of my miners. What the fuck are you doing? Absolute morons. Uh, yeah, that was two of my miners. Uh, the third miner was for... Um... Hesitation, because I didn't want to pull over to the right side of the road, which obviously means going into oncoming traffic. I didn't feel like it was safe, but the instructor thought it was, so he marked that down as hesitation. Um, there was two more miners that I've kind of forgotten about. Um, oh, I'm trying to think what they were. I cannot remember. I can load it up on uh, my email. I'll load it up and I'll tell you in the uh, next clip. Um, but I know one of my... My final miner that I got... You ready for this, chat? <laughs> so, um... I had those five. And the final one... A lot of people say should be a fail. Straight up. I got caught speeding <laughs> on my driving test. <laughs> I got caught speeding on my driving test. <laughs> and I still pass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bruh indeed. Bruh indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair I was going 32 miles an hour in a 30 um, and I noticed it and corrected it pretty swiftly so I think that's why he only marked it as a minor rather than a major but I was still speeding <laughs> so <laughs> it, w it wasn't anything ridiculous the speed limit had just changed 
um, and I obviously hadn't noticed that my speed was actually higher than it should have been, so... But... You should stop playing games that makes you violent behind the wheel. Surprisingly not. I'll be honest. I drive like an absolute dick in racing games. Like, end of discussion, I drive like a fucking dick. But on the road... I'm probably a bit too cautious. <laughs> Love my... Bring us back together. Say, ooh, baby. I feel like music sounds better with you. Honestly, I, I'll, I'll be totally honest. That first race. This first race has gone fucking terribly. I've got a dead engine. I've been crashing like a bitch. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Up with you, I can't keep up. He used to get beaten to the overheating. Yeah, these cars are used to um, being quite battered and bruised. In control of the morning. In control of the sea <laughs> to be fair a lot of older automatic cars aren't that great um, so if I were you learn stick shift and get a manual car Learning stick shift in America is actually quite a decent skill anyways. Because I know a lot of America focuses on automatic gearboxes and stuff like that. So having the skills of knowing how to drive a stick shift is always better. In the UK, most people learn manual because majority of cars are manual. But you have the option if you're shit with a manual gearbox, you can learn as an auto driver and just only drive automatics. But... I don't think it is cheaper to learn stick. I just think the cars are cheaper. Though, to be fair, you don't have to have as much time learning how clutch control and stuff like that. So I suppose it makes sense. Less lessons. I'll end up smoking my clutch due to a Karen messing around in front of me. See, if you end up smoking your clutch because of that, you haven't got good clutch control. <laughs> All right, chat, chat. I've got the exact things. So... It says you've passed your Category B driving test on 14th of October. That's when I did it. Your driving faults. Move off, control. Two. So I got two faults for that, and that's where, um, when I was pulling away, I stalled twice. Uh, safety for moving off as well. Uh, apparently I didn't look in a blind spot one time. Um... So, I didn't look enough in my blind spots to do it. Obviously, if you don't look at all, it's like a straight-up fail. Uh, control gears. So, one of those was, um, I believe, because of the fact I shifted into a gear that was too high and my car started to sort of, like, chudder. So, had to shift out. Uh, I'm doing good, Tag. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Um, following distance, so I was basically being a BMW driver, <laughs> way too close to the car in front, um, and then my final minor that I got on my test was use of speed, which basically meant I was speeding on my driving test. Oh. <laughs> uh. Again, it wasn't, like, ridiculous speeding. It wasn't like, oh, I was going 70 miles an hour in a 30. 
that would have been instant failure. But, yeah. I did get a minor for that. My driving instructor wasn't too happy either that <laughs> I got a minor for speed control. The other ones he w wasn't too fussed about, but the speed one, he was like, How have you managed that? <laughs> But yeah, my driving instructor was a fucking legend. The second one, anyways. The first one was like an old man who really didn't enjoy his job anymore. But the second one, he was fucking chill. Just vibe to music. Yeah, miss shifting will happen all the time. It's just how you, um... What's it called? It's how you correct it. Obviously, in an actual driving test, if you, like, are in third when you should be in second, they'll mark it as a minor no matter what, because they are quite strict on that. But as long as you do that and you go down in an efficient way, they'll just give you a minor and it's nothing bad. Like, again, you can do that three times on your test. Well, actually, no, you can do it twice. The third time will fail you. So it's not a problem. Um, the thing is, right, when I did my stalling, basically on that road was where four of my miners were. So other than the speeding and, um, what was the other one? And the following distance, other than the speeding and the following distance, it would have been a perfect test. If it wasn't for the fact I stalled it on that road. Because the other four that I got was all from that one road. The guy said, if you, if you were just a little bit closer paying attention to your speed. And your distance behind people. Um, and you ignore that hiccup that you had. Where you completely botched it. Would have been a perfect test. So... Uh, I've never driven, I'm learning, but not good enough to get behind the wheel. It takes some time. To be perfectly honest, it takes time. Um, for me, I sort of have the knowledge of cars in general. I've worked on cars. I've had had previous experience driving cars even before I started like doing my lessons. So that sort of gave me the edge. I guess. But. Um, it, it does take some time. Like if. 40 hours is about the average. I would expect someone to be able to do it in. One problem I have is remembering which pedal is which. Yeah I mean. Anything can be a problem when it comes to driving. Um. Hands, if you leave your right foot down on a bike, um, you kind of don't go anywhere. <laughs> Whereas in a car, you go too fast. <laughs> um, but yeah. If engine got power and you're slightly off hill, you can go to third and just cruise with saving fuel. You can. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, so I don't like shifting up to a higher gear if I can't do it and drive with it. Um, I always want to be in about 1,500 RPM on my engine. I hate driving it towards where the idle is in a gear because it just doesn't feel right. It means I've got less control on my speed. I can't go down much because of that. Because then I have to put the clutch down and change gear. So I'd much rather be in fourth and have my engine at 1300 RPM than be in fifth and have it right on my idle limit. Like 900 RPM. Because that way you can't slow down anymore. You can only speed up. So I like to be in fourth and do it. 
Oh, you mean like muscle memory? Yeah, I suppose. Once you remember it, it's like second nature. Um, one thing that I found that kind of helped um, getting used to like clutch control and stuff like that. Worst thing in my mind is going in reverse. I need to go into reverse and press the gas. Yeah, so that's the problem. If you play racing games, a lot of racing games will let you just hold brake and it will start reversing. Which is not how cars work. Even automatic cars do not work like that. Um, in an automatic, you have to hold the brake till you stop, shift into a reverse gear. You've either got a forwards gear or a reverse gear. And you use the gas to reverse still. So. But yeah, that. I mean, one thing that really helped me when it came to driving. Um, Dirt Rally 2.0. Fully manual with clutch and everything helps with clutch control, sort of, um, because you can't just fucking ram the gears. It's pretty good. Never use an automatic. I prefer stick. It makes sense to me. See, automatic is just manual without having to worry about gears. So. I prefer manual because I have more control over what gears I'm in. Um, an automatic, depending on what type of automatic, if you've got like a, I think it's a CVT or whatever, um, those ones don't really matter. But uh, when it comes to uh, something like, I don't know. They've got automatic gearboxes that is literally a manual gearbox. Like a manual shifter and everything. Manual clutch. But just... It has motors that automatically does that for you. So you still have the slow shift in time and whatnot for those automatic gearboxes. I don't know what they're called, but they're not great. You have fancier automatic. So it... It all depends, but me personally, I prefer manual because I have control over what gear I'm in. But when it comes to a point where your brain is having to compute so much stuff, do I need to press clutch to go into reverse? You need to press, press the clutch to go into any gear, not just reverse, first, second. Any gear, when you're going in or out of a gear, you should always press the clutch. Technically speaking, pulling out of a gear without using the clutch is not recommended, but it's possible. You might crunch one or two teeth on your gears, but you cannot go into a gear without pressing the clutch, because that will just grind. So... I do think um, there sh I don't want to say it like this because some people can't use uh, manual gearboxes and whatnot because they just can't understand it. That's fair enough. I don't think they shouldn't be able to drive. But at the same time, I do think they shouldn't be able to drive. Because if you can't understand how the gears are working in your car, and you're just relying on... Like, what's what's the point in actually learning to drive at that point? Because you're not actually learning to drive. You're letting the car do a majority of it. I don't know. I think everyone should have to learn manual. And then if you want to use an automatic car, you can. Because that way you can use any car. Because there are, there are some driving instructors that just teach automatic and you can just pass an automatic test and only drive automatic cars but I can tell you, you needed it for gear switch but I just wanted to know if I need it for reverse yes so the thing is right a, a forward first gear is actually slower than reverse gear 
Um, a reverse gear can go fairly quick backwards, actually. Um, I think in the Golf that we were driving, the forward gear would get you up to about 30 miles an hour, whereas the reverse could quite easily get you to about 40. Um, no idea why they do that, but the reverse gear is faster. Um, but you're never wanting to reverse any faster than like three miles an hour. So when you're going backwards, you have to rely on the clutch a lot. So all you do is just give it a tiny tap of the gas so that the revs are more than a thousand. Um, and just use the clutch to go backwards. Lift it slightly above the biting point, you start moving back faster. Below the biting point, you go back slower. That kind of thing. You shouldn't ever need to use the brake unless someone starts driving towards you. Uh, or you're losing control of the car. Pretty much. Like, Teslas are perfectly capable of going backwards at 120. But if you're going backwards at 120... Go. Yeah. Go, go, go! Vroom, vroom! We have got the power. Oi! Stop touching my bunda. Mentions polarity, my brain instantly dead. It's to do with electronics. Um, basically, motors send electricity one way through. So if you send electricity through wire A, and have it come out of wire B, it will go in one direction. But if you send it through in the opposite direction, reversing the polarity, um, the motor spins in the opposite direction. It, it's quite difficult to understand unless you've done electrical stuff. Um, I did some electrical stuff. I kind of didn't pay attention to that in college. So, yeah, that's pretty much how electric motors work. I'm pretty sure you can find a YouTube video that explains it better than what I did, so if, if that's something you're interested in, have a, have a Google. Come with me, oh yeah. But yeah, I would like to look for... I don't know what I get as a first card, to be honest. Um, I know for a fact I'm not getting... Um, I'm definitely not getting a Suzuki. Because... My cousin has a Suzuki. I can't have the same car. It's just an unwritten rule that you can't have the same car as someone else in your family. It's just odd. <laughs> I mean, I could look for a Fiesta, but I don't know whether there'd be any good Fiestas. The thing is, if I'm buying a car, it needs to be somewhat not upgradable, but I need to be able to change stuff inside the car. Like, I want to be able to change the radio if the radio is terrible. Um, or, like, the speakers or whatnot. Because I'd like to put some proper speakers in. Because I've got to have my music. Otherwise, what I'll end up doing is just getting a massive boombox and just having that in my car instead for my music. The sunlight hurts my eyes. Yeah, I'd probably end up getting this Sony thing and just using a speaker for my music instead, if it's terrible. No. If you're limited to auto cars only, it's not cheaper. Also, cars aren't cheaper most of the time. 
But I think it does make sense why it's cheaper because... Um, what's it called? Because of the fact you can... You don't have to learn throttle control and like clutch control and anything like that. So technically speaking, all of the hours of getting used to how a car drives, you don't have to worry about that. You can just start learning road rules and stuff like that. So. Yeah. You can drive... You drive less stuff over your lessons. You learn less stuff. Like, you don't have to learn clutch control for maneuvers or anything like that. That side of learning just doesn't exist, so... Put on those shades and wave to yesterday. The sunlight hurts my eyes. Put on those shades and wave to yesterday. The sunlight hurts my eyes. Yeah. With B class driver's license, I can drive manual, auto, vans, 50cc scooters. What can I drive on my license, actually? Yeah, that makes sense. Let me have a look. What can I actually drive? Oh, Curry's has got their Black Friday deals. Uh, I'll have a look at it in a second to see what I can drive on my driver's license. I think it's pretty cool, though, that I can officially say, like, I can drive on my own and I don't need someone to watch me. How cool is that? The sunlight hurts my eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah, so you can drive more, so you get more out of it? Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Oh no, I've said I'm not being a family taxi. To be honest, my family is like two hours away from me now, so don't have to worry about that. So unless I have like two people that I live with need a taxi ride, by all means I can do a taxi there, but yeah, I won't have that. You're burning passion. When I look in your eyes, yeah, yeah, are you afraid to feel what you know is real, like any other guy? In your eyes, yeah, yeah, are you afraid to feel what you know is real, like any other guy? Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. I'll have a look at it in a second. I completely forgot to check. I was too busy looking at my fucking past statistics. I really don't like Coke Zero. And you can keep the Coke Zero and pass on it. Fucking lid off. Coca-Cola without sugar does taste weird, but Diet Coke tastes better than Coke Zero, in my opinion. Uh, Pepsi, on the other hand, with sugar, tastes really fucking odd. So... My preferences are Coca-Cola. Um, so if you think of it as like the... Um, in order of like... 
the brands out of the full versions prefer coca-cola coca-cola red um out of the max slash zero brands so the ones where it's like maximum flavor but no sugar um definitely prefer pepsi's version pepsi max is amazing and in fact pepsi max is better than full coke it's like the best out of all of them uh, and then diets, Diet Coke is better than Diet Pepsi, so. I really am not a great fan of that, though. Just like normal cock. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> 100 millimeter defeater. Fucking hell. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Right, we got a 20% discount on twin screen superchargers. Let's go. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Uh -huh.